right, welcome to another edition of the Bodybuilding Legend Show. I'm your host, John Hansen, and we are broadcasting from the Powerhouse Gym Athletic Club in Tampa, Florida. Our guest this week on the Bodybuilding Legend Show is Mike Christian, the Iron Warrior himself. In part one of our interview today, we're going to talk to Mike about how he got started in the sport of bodybuilding and his early beginnings training at Gold's Gym, the mecca of bodybuilding out in Venice, California with the Barbarian Brothers, and then his rise to the top in the amateur bodybuilding field, culminating in 1984 when he won the MPC Nationals overall and the heavyweight class at the IFBB Mr. Universe in Las Vegas. And then Mike's going to talk about competing in the Mr. Olympia contest against Lee Haney and his rival, Rich Gaspari. So we got a great interview coming up with Mike Christian on the Bodybuilding Legends show, part one of our interview. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after our sponsors to hear from Mike Christian. Welcome to Opus Health, Tampa Bay's elite medical center, where we offer dental, vision, primary care, urgent care, alternative medicine, IV therapy, and more to come. Along with wellness, weight loss, hormone replacement therapy, we are open seven days a week. You can reach us at 813-906-6737 or opushealth.org. We are located at 912 Channelside Drive in Tampa, Florida. You can book online or email us for, with any questions. All right, welcome back to the Bodybuilding Legend Show. And my very special guest today is the Iron Warrior, Mike Christian himself. Mike, how you doing? Very good. Happy to be here, John. All right. I'm glad we finally hooked up and we got you on the show. I've been waiting to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, let's start at the at the very beginning, like we always do. Um, tell me uh, about your childhood, like how you got into weightlifting and, and what got you into uh, bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. Well, I started uh, weight training in a friend's backyard, and I was in a gang then, so that was the thing to do, to get buff, buffs to oil up and walk around the streets looking big. <laughs> so uh, then I moved from uh, L.A. to Portland, Oregon. I actually competed for the first time, amateur Mr. Oregon, uh, Portland rather, in 1976. Won that. Won the uh, Portland next year, the Oregon, on, on, on. Wow. Like ten in a row, so I was just hooked. <laughs> <laughs> so how old were you, Mike? How old were you when you started weight training? Uh, 20. 20, okay. I'm years old, yes. Yeah. Now, you said you were in a gang back then in, uh, in yes. California? Yes, sir. Yeah. What was that about? Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, it was just a street gang. It's uh, still going on even nowadays. Uh -huh. Over 45 years ago, I was one of the co-founders of it. And, um, you know, just was the thing to do. <laughs> Back then, for me, I thought it was the right thing to do. So right. I was having fun with my companions, my friends, and kind of grew up on the wrong side of the street. Okay. So but we start turned our life around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So you started weight training at 20. Did you, what was your yeah. body like back then? Like, what was your physique like? I was um, skinny, broad shoulders, and very veiny, hard, you know, kind of very muscular. Okay. I was uh, 5'11", 175 pounds, 177. Okay, okay. And so how did you get into bodybuilding? Did you see anybody? Did you start reading <laughs> the magazines or anything? <laughs> no, it was actually funny. When I went from L.A. to Portland, Oregon, where my father was living, uh -huh. um, he uh, showed me a recreation center in there, and I met this guy named Chuck Amaro that did very well in the Miss America middle class years ago. Yeah, I remember his name. There. Yeah, you remember Chuck? Very yeah. good Italian guy, very good uh, body. I met him, and he uh, tried to talk me and go into my first show, which I wasn't crazy about. I was like, <laughs> oil up and put these little panties on. <laughs> it wasn't for me, but after uh, six months, he talked me into going to my first show and it just took off from there. It was that same exhilaration that I got when I was actually gangbanging. I would hit somebody, knock somebody out, everybody would go nuts and, you know, <laughs> and uh, look at me. And then once I won my first contest, it was the same thing. People praised me, they, you know, took pictures of me here, this and that. So um, I think that transformation from that to that was uh, very important. So what was the first contest, Mike? Amateur Mr. Portland, 1976. Okay. And how did you do in that? Your first one? First. You took first place. Okay. Mm -hmm. The following year, 1977, was Mr. Portland. Uh -huh. I won that. And you won that one year, also? Was Mr. Oregon. I won that one. <laughs> That's all. Okay. Won like 10 in a row, John. Wow. No kidding. Blessed. I was blessed. <laughs> <laughs> 
So how was your physique back then? Like, how was it developing as you were going along? It was more or less all upper body because I was in uh, YTA, Youth Authority. Okay. And we didn't do any legs at that point. So it was more or less all upper body. I won all the body parts when I competed, back, chest, and uh, arms. So I had body parts back then. There, you know, yeah, the yeah, I remember, yeah. Um, it was it was an exciting moment for me. Very exciting. Okay. Just years. <laughs> So when did you go to the national level? Um, I went 1980, um, I believe it was. It was the USA. And I took like fifth in the uh, heavyweight class. I said, hey, is this something I can do? Mm -hmm. So I went back to Oregon, and I uh, competed in, I think, the Northwest. And um, many felt I should have won. And um, I just, from there, I left Oregon, Northwest, and moved up back to California. And uh Start eating contests there. So the what part? The Barbarian Brothers, Samir, Robbie Robinson. <laughs> okay. So when you moved back to California, you went to Southern California, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So, it was so uh, heartbreaking because when I walked in the Ghost Gym, it's a funny story. And I looked and I saw all these people I seen in the magazine, Samir, Robbie, uh, Tom Platt, I mean, on and on. And I thought they were like six, seven in the magazine <laughs> on TV. Right, right. And all of them were like five, seven, five, eight. I was like towering over everybody. I said, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> kind of hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> I thought they were just so huge in the magazines, John, you know? Yeah. So when you were reading the magazines, which guys were you looking up to back then? This was probably in the late 70s, right? Uh-huh, right. It was for sure Robbie Robinson, Sergio, Arnold, and Lou Frigno. Okay. Yeah, Robbie. Robbie's a big uh, influence on a lot of people. I talked to Lee Haney and you know Phil Williams, and they all mm -hmm. like Robbie. You know. Yes. Yes, he's a real person too. Yeah. So you, what type, what year did you move back to California then? Eighty. Eighty. Okay. So nineteen eighty. Yeah. So, what was your plans then? Was your plan to be a professional bodybuilder? Well, I was actually going to see how far I could go. Yeah. So my energy, like, I think the first contest was the junior. Uh, Mr. America and I placed I think fourth or fifth in the heavyweight class. Yeah. And um came back the following year and um placed third or something in, in the same show and then actually eighty three I won the Mr. Uh, the National. I uh, mean uh, the National. Okay. And eighty four of course I won the Mr. Uh, America and a week later the Mr. Universe in Caesars Palace, Las Vegas. Right. But you won the California also, right, Mike, in uh, 81? Yes, 83. That was the first major contest. Okay. And, uh, like, Mr. California is like Mr. USA, you know? <laughs> yeah. Coming from where I came from, you know, Port right. Oregon. Right. Yeah, back yeah. then, the, the Mr. California was a really big show, right? I mean, yeah, that was John like Nita was in there. Had some real good bodybuilders at the time, yeah? Yeah. So you went in the, um, I'm looking at your contest history here, you won in the AAU California in 81, and you won the heavyweights, right? Right, and they won. Who won the overall there, Mike? I can't remember who won. <laughs> was it John? Oh, gosh. Yeah, it, doesn't, it said uh, John Arenito won the team, but it doesn't have who won the overall. Right. I won the overall 83. Yeah, yeah. 81 you're speaking of, right? Yeah, 81. That was AU, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I can't remember who won. I, I took, what, third set? Uh, yeah, first. First in the heavyweights. Okay. Yeah. Who uh, won overall? So in '82, the 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 uh, MPC started, right? Yes. And you that's went. why I got on stage with, of course, the lead, the great Lee Haney. <laughs> yeah. And you and, went into uh, the uh, the USA before that, right? Yes. Uh huh. Please, I think fifth in there too. Yeah. You got the information better more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It looks like uh, yeah, eighty eighty two. John Jordan won. That's what I was trying to figure out for the John. John, yeah. Yeah. John Jordan, right. John Jordan won. Neil yeah. Spruce got second and Bob Paris got third. That's right, man. Yes. And you were fourth. Yes, yes. Me and John kind of went round and around. He was one of those types that was very aggressive on stage and we were like elbowing each other. You know how Oh, goes. really? <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. called him backstage and said, man, you better be careful. <laughs> <laughs> With me. Yeah. I never had that happen to me before, you know? So. <laughs> Yeah, I remember reading, um, I think it was Muscle <laughs> Digest back in the, the late 70s, and they would cover a lot of those um, California shows, and I would see he won a lot of shows, and you I, that's where I first saw you, I think, and Bob mm -hmm. Harris, you know, because you guys won a lot of local shows back then. Right. And that's when the AAU was first starting up and stuff, you know. Exactly. Roy Liedemeyer was around then. Yeah. 
in 83, 84, Matt Mendenhall, of course, the great Matt Mendenhall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So back in the, when you went to Gold's, like, who were you training with back then? Um, The Barbarian Brothers. Really? Okay. For the first probably three years, I mean, just coming to California. Okay. So how was, what was that like? Tell, tell me oh, a little bit about crazy. that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> drinking protein drinks, spitting on the ground, lifted 500 pounds, bench press, reverse grip, and yeah. squatting five, 600 pounds. So I had fun. I was right at <laughs> home, John. <laughs> I was at home. So <laughs> I didn't go for the the slapping each other that he used to do. You know? yeah. One slapped the other one before they get and do a set. But <laughs> I looked at Dave and says, don't slap me. I don't play that slapping <laughs> stuff on you, really. <laughs> You know, they go off and bam, yeah. and do a set. <laughs> they slap each other in the uh, face. Or, I still uh, keep in contact with David Paul. Yeah, yeah. Via Facebook. So how did your You know, John, I was just there in uh, Tampa. Oh, what, really? Two weeks ago. Yes, I didn't know you were there. No I kidding. visited Shane DeMora. I uh, saw the pictures 50th, of that. Uh, first yeah. time. First yeah, I saw time. the pictures of you it's and Shane. St. Uh, St. Pete. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a half hour. Yeah, I was there for days. No kidding. Oh, I wish I would have known you were here. Yeah, yeah it was a surprise party for for him, and uh, he came home. They kept him away from the house for a while to get all ready, and uh, he came home, and I actually answered the door. I said, "Let me answer the door." <laughs> Open the door. And said, "Can I help you?" And he almost, ah, <laughs> no, my trick. <laughs> we talked each other fifteen years, you know, John. So yeah. he just freaked out, man. And we were very good friends. When he first came to California, he actually stayed with me for four months. Wow. I took him around, got him food, went to the gym every day, you know, took him to photo shoots. He was the youngest uh, professional back then. Well, yeah, I remember. I remember from the, so, from the yeah, junior national. Came yeah. very, very, very close. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So tell me a little bit more about Gold's Gym when you got there, Mike, because these are all the guys you were reading about in the magazines and stuff, and then you walk in and, and you see them all in person. Uh, who really impressed you there? I mean, who who did you get to meet and be friends with and stuff? Well, I, I met everybody, but I never actually went up to them and asked them about what you do and how you do it. You know, I was, yeah. I kind of, uh, John, what I did is I would look at Arnold or I would look at Robbie and Lou and see what type of a physique they had and what kind of training cycle they would do. Mm -hmm. And I kind of made my own routine together, which I still do four years later. I do the push pull where one day, of course, I'm doing chest Shoulders, triceps, pushing. Yeah. Next day, back biceps, pulling. And then third day, legs. I take off and then the cycle repeats. And it's always been very good for me. I put on seven to eight pounds, nine pounds of muscle every year. Hmm. Wow. Okay. 80, so it's the best routine for me. So when you when you hooked up with the Barbarians, you were really making progress then, huh? Training with those Yeah, guys. they thought I was going to be Mr. America. They knew it way back then. I didn't know what I was going to do or be, but... They had faith in me. They all would say, Mike, you got the potential to be Mr. America. Mm -hmm. That was way back then, you know. So I and I actually stayed with one of them for probably about three or four months. They lived on the beach uh, when I first moved to California. Bedroom apartment. They gave me and my girlfriend the bedroom, and they slept on the couch and on the floor outside. Wow. And that's really? how close we were. I know. Unbelievable story, man. <laughs> that was my boys, too. Very, very good friends of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just did an interview with uh, Phil Williams, and he was training at Gold's for a while, and he said he was he was <laughs> yeah, good with you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had lots of fun together. Me and Phil, I thought he was going to be Mr. Olympia too. You know, he had yeah. a beautiful physique, as you know, you know, right. and a great overall person, just very friendly, unique, personable. Yeah, really good friend. I also, yeah. Yeah, he was he was talking about the energy that was in Golds at that time, and he said it'll never be <laughs> it'll never be uh, replicated. You know what I mean? He said it, there's so many great guys in there training, and and the energy in there, and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And half the guys basically were sitting behind the gym in their cars. Really? <laughs> they were coming from Rhode Island or Connecticut or whatever, and they wanted to be at Golds Gym Vins, of course. Yeah. And didn't have a place to stay. It was you know spend the night in their car in the back. Go and go, take a shower, work out for four or five hours, <laughs> eat, and just and keep on doing it. Was, it was fantastic days, John. It was unbelievable, man. It was so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> so Aaron was, Baker, I mean, you know, I could name hundreds of them, of course, but they were all there in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. And you, did you get to know uh, Samir pretty good? Very good. <laughs> yeah, we were very good friends. Uh, <laughs> we used to talk stuff to each other, but in heart, we <laughs> 
Break the friends. <laughs> yeah. Now that Mike Christian, who took fourth in last year's Mr. O, is out of the lineup, how do you think you're going to place next Saturday? Forget it. Mike Christian was never on my mind, and he'll never be. And as, as far as I'm concerned, he claimed that I bark and I don't bite, but who is he to say that I'm Mr. Olympia? He hasn't won nothing. To me, he hasn't beaten Lee Haney. He hasn't even taken one first spot from Lee Haney. When you want to open your mouth, you better be somebody before you talk. And so, you know, he was never on my mind. And uh, I think he's a great champion, but definitely he's not in my caliber. Some people believe you could have done it this year, and the reason you dropped out is after you saw Samir Banut's condition. Oh, wow, I've never heard that. Uh, Samir is looking very well, but he never worried me at all. Samir is five foot eight. I'm six one. I think that answers the question. <laughs> Tell him I'm gonna beat him in Mr. Olympia, and he said, "No, you got another two years, my person." Yeah. <laughs> so we go at each other almost on a daily um, basis, but we were actually very good friends. But we would talk stuff to each other in front of everybody and in the magazines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's yeah. go to that um, that '82 Nationals. That was the first one they had in New York, and uh, Lee Haney won, and I think he got fourth place. Uh, yes. Oh, Matt Mendenhall was second. And right. I think Bob Paris was third, right? Right, exactly. That was for 82. Yeah. He, so what did you think of those guys when you competed? That was probably the first time you saw Lee, right? Exactly. I thought those guys were unbelievable. And when I got in there, I wanted to see where I stood with the best, John. Yeah. And like I said, I took fourth in a, basically first time going into a big show like that. So I, I, I knew I had something going, you mm -hmm. know? Even Lee Haney, he looked at me, you know, said, yeah, you the guy I'm about to watch out for. Oh, really? Yeah. You no, know, it's funny because once I turned pro uh, for the first couple of years, that's what he would say. He says, is that Mike Christian? That's the one I, I'm not worried about a little Lee to my, I mean, uh, um, uh, Lee Labrada or, yeah. you know, the shorter guys. I had a big frame. I was taller than him. So right. he would actually say that he was worried about me back in the day. Now, did you I get took to it to him every time, John. <laughs> <laughs> did you get to meet Lee at that show? Did you get to talk to him? Yes. Just a little bit then. Yeah. We actually, once he moved to California, we became very, very good friends. Mm -hmm. I would take him around uh, different places to eat, show him the places to, um, you know, take up, well, get a hotel, and um, just gave him some good pointers at, at that point. And we became very, very close. And then actually, Josh was born. We used to walk down the boardwalk yeah. in Venice Beach. Yeah, he yes. said that when I interviewed Lee, he said you were his babysitter for a while. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I did take care of that boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of many, though. <laughs> right. One of many. So then we go into uh, 83, Mike, and then that was the year you won the California. So that, that was a big year for you, right? That was a big title win for you. Yes, uh, that's when I said, hey, I think I can win it all next year at the Nationals. And uh, I was real uh, gung-ho and I had good publicity going to the show. So I, I put on like seven, seven, eight pounds of muscle within that year from 83, 84. Yeah. And um, I won it in 84. Yeah. 83, of course, was the year that Bob Paris won. Lee Mar took second. And I took third. third or fourth. Yeah, you're third. Which yeah. I felt was a slap in the face because I thought it was between me and Paris. And I had the edge. Yeah. And most, many people thought the same thing. They actually called me the uncrowned Mr. America after that show. Yeah. <laughs> so. Let's welcome Mike Christian.
Nation. <laughs> and that, that was, was in a hard one to swallow. That was in California too, right? That show. Yes, it was San Jose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, San Jose. I yeah. actually cried after that show. I went outside. Paul Love saw me. I said, I just couldn't help. I cry because there really? you know, was just so much emotions and yeah. every, the crowd was rooting for me. You know, I just yeah. I, I thought I was gonna win for sure. So when I took, I think third, or fourth, it was a real slap in the face. Yeah. Maybe second <laughs> next to Bob, but yeah. third or fourth. I'm, I mean, you can actually see videos of me. Walking off stage and right. hello, trying to give me the trophy. That, yeah. <laughs> Bad sportsmanship, but um, I learned from there. But it yeah. was, that was a hard. That was hard. Close down. Thank you, gentlemen, to present the trophies. Hello. In fifth place, number 70, Richard Gasparri. In fourth place, in the heavyweight class, Number 77, Matt Mendenhall. Okay, here we go, the top three. In third place, Mike Christian. Let's be good sports on stage, too. The 1983 National Bodybuilding Heavyweight Champion. Bob Perry. Second place goes to Rory Lattemeyer. And Jim Mannion, please come up on stage. Mike, can you wait just a second? Get a picture quickly, would you please? Get your pictures quickly, very quickly. Please pose, gentlemen. As they say, that's competition. Congratulations, one and all. Thank you very much. But the next year, I came back stronger, bigger, harder, and wanted to leave no questions. I want to make sure I slam dunked it, which I did. I got lucky. Right. So in '83, did you? What did you think of Bob's uh, physique, Bob Paris? Beautiful. Him and Roy Leadham are perfect physiques. Um, they were getting a lot of publicity going into the magazine, so I was a little worried. I thought I could beat them, but they were like Weeders Magazine, the perfect physique, the perfect this, the perfect that, um, Bob yeah. Paris and Woody tomorrow. So uh, I knew I had trained extremely hard to beat yeah. both those guys. Yeah, isn't it and, weird, um, Mike? Eighty four. Back then, uh, it, the physique, the symmetry of the physique, the beauty of the physique was really taken into consideration, even for a guy who was a heavyweight. You know, like the. Um, Bob Paris and Roy Ludemar, like you said, you know, they were really looking at their symmetry and their shape, and that was a big part of uh, of being a good bodybuilder, right? Mm -hmm. Having symmetry and shape, exactly. Yeah. It's kind of changed a little bit since then, right? Now it's more just the size. Wow. And, yeah. It's how big you are. Yeah. Back 
and John, you could cut off each one of our heads and you could tell which body was which and who right. was who. Right. Now you cut off the heads, you put all the bodies together, you don't know who's who. Right. <laughs> you know? I mean, there's one or two maybe, but they more or less all look the same, John. Yeah, yeah. And it's and it's all on the big kick now. You know, Ronnie Coleman started that and Dorian Yates. And yeah. It's like bigger and bigger and bigger. And yeah. <laughs> doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like that kid uh, that I'm very impressed with, uh, Ronnie. He has great symmetry. He's big. He's hard. But he comes in 210. <laughs> I mean, 310. Yeah, don't come down ten pounds in the darn thing, you know. Right, right. small ways. His uh, legs don't have much cuts in them, you know. But if he lost 10, 15 pounds, he'd yeah. still be one of the biggest on stage and still win. Yeah, exactly. I have no understanding of that, but I right. think he's going to be the next Mister Olympia coming up if he gets in shape. Okay. So we're going to uh, eighty four now, and you had to be psyched up because you knew that that was going to be your year if you trained hard enough, right, for that one. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you know Bob, Bob already turned pro, so all you had to worry about was Rory. So and Matt th- Mendenhall and Matt Mendenhall, yeah. Mm-hmm. So were you thinking about those guys as you trained for '84? Oh yeah, I, it, they were all on my mind. Yeah, but I would actually get in shape a week before the contest. Uh-huh. So I'd go in the gym and see Matt and Roy, head down, barely can walk, talk, <laughs> look, to, uh, work out. And um, like I said, I'd be ready a week for ahead of time. I go and eating cookies and candy and laughing and slapping butts. And <laughs> <laughs> so I used to mess with their mind a little bit. Right. <laughs> I was getting bigger; they were getting smaller. Because right. <laughs> so, I kept around fifteen pounds within contest conditions all year round, mm-hmm. which I think is the best way to do it. Yeah. So time come time for the contest, I was ready a week, ten days for the show. I've always wanted to do it like that. Instead of trying to bullseye in each contest, you know, I prepare myself a week ahead of time. Then you can play the balancing that carb yeah. load, you know, deplete, you know, right. And you can you can hit dead on at the uh, contest, you know. So yeah. I believe in type of uh, uh, preparing for a contest. How many how many pounds bigger were you for the, in eighty four than you were in eighty three? Eight pounds. Eight pounds. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, every year I put on like seven, eight pounds. Wow, okay. And seven, eight pounds of muscle, as we know, makes yeah. you look 10, 15 pounds oh, heavier. Yeah. yeah, and it seemed like you always had a pretty fast metabolism, right, Mike? Because you were always ripped in shape and contest shape. Very exactly. vascular and, yeah. Yeah, I think my, my downfall was uh, after the contest, I, I would stop training for easy three or four months, maybe longer. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've always done that for uh, all the years, and... um I wasn't like Lee Haney and Gaspar. They trained all year round, but yeah. I would do three months for the show, two months for the show. I go in there, I put 15, 20 pounds on, get in shape. Wow. <laughs> but yeah. I would do everything, start on that eight week uh, time. I would diet, you know, everything. Everything was right perfectly. Wow. I had no time to cheat, you know? Yeah. I didn't play the cheating game. Like most of these guys slowly go into the diets. I never did. I went mm-hmm. day one. Yeah. Fishing power. <laughs> right. right. I would just tough it out and do what I had to do, you know. What kind of diet worked for you? Was it real low carbs? Low carbs, exactly. Low carbs, high protein. I did that for years. I never used to do the treadmill. And then I learned from people like Ronnie Coleman that you can actually consume and eat more and still be in shape and be bigger. Mm-hmm. So that I started doing later on my in my career. I think I started doing that maybe 19, almost 90. I waited that long. But wow. before then, John, I never did any treadmill, no cardio at all. And, of course, like I said, I had a fast metabolism, so I didn't really have the need to do it. Yeah. And every year I put on eight, seven, eight pounds of muscle, so everything's working fine. Yeah. I didn't really want to change anything, you know? Well, back in the 1980s, too, I was competing back then. Guys didn't do that much cardio. You know, we just dieted yeah. hard, right? Exactly, yeah. And the, and the low training carb, was hard. Zero carb. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Zero carb thing that was, you know, big back then. Yeah. And training twice a day sometimes, you know? Yeah. 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 So you win. You go into the nationals. You win that. Uh, how did you feel about Mendenhall? Because Mendenhall looked really good that year. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, I, well, to this day, I think he could be. He could have won the Mr. Olympia a bunch of times. Yeah, me too. But, um, um, I felt good on the win. You know, I beat some good guys. I think the other guy that was really good that was uh, in the contest was a guy named something Williams. It was Jeff Williams? Jeff Williams. Yeah. Remember, he was yeah, huge, he was a monster, back, yeah. arm, legs, everything. Yeah. He was just a kid, yeah. 21 years old. Wow. wow. I beat him that year. It wasn't an easy win for me. Yeah. <laughs> that wow. kid was big, hard, and very symmetrical. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. He was in it in 84. Because I remember in 83, 
he didn't place as high as he thought. And he didn't come back for the night show, remember? Right, exactly. Yes, uh-huh. Right. That's uh, crazy. I think I broke a lot of hearts that year. <laughs> <laughs> Roy and him and a few other, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. That's something because it's so weird that all those guys that I thought for sure was going to be pros, I'm the only one out the bunch that actually turned yeah, pro. That's true. Yeah. All of them, Jeff, Roy, you know, right. Matt. Matt, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Going into that overall, did you feel you had the overall pretty easy? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are just bigger. And, of course, uh, the, uh, Mr. Universe was a week later. Right. And then at that year, first time, Mr. Olympia was a week later. Oh, okay. It's been a row. Yeah. So, so we just grabbed me up and says, Mike, you got to go on the Mr. Olympia. Three in a row. It's never been like this. You can beat Leo, Lee Haney. Your muscles are more interesting than Lee Haney. Come on, <laughs> go in it. And I thought about it, John. I said, no, I don't think it's a good idea. I wanted to capitalize on the first place, Mr. America, uh, the universe, make money off of there. Knowing if I went to Mr. Olympia, politics, even if I was the best, I wasn't going to win. Right. So yeah. I would end up taking third, fourth, maybe even fifth. Yeah. But I had first place, this and that. So I said, no, I'm not going to go in, Joe. He, he begged me to go in. Yeah. And I thought it was a good move for me staying out and waiting another year. Yeah, I think that's a good move, too. That flies on, you know, what you, first place, first place, not first place, first place, and third place, Mr. Olympia, you know, John? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> And your overall winner of the 1984 Men's Nationals goes to Mr. Mike Christian. Let's talk about that universe. You go into the universe that's in Vegas that year, and uh, Barry DeMay is your chief competition because he took yeah. second the year before to Bob Paris. Did you exactly. think you were going to beat him, or do you think it would be close? Or I thought it'd be close for sure. I, I thought I had an edge, but um, I knew it was going to be between him and I for sure. Yeah, yeah. He seemed to take that a little hard, but you know he was still young at that point, right? Mm-hmm. He took it hard the year before when Bob Paris beat him too. Yeah. Yeah. So it was back to back. So he, yeah, it was it was hard for him. Yeah. <laughs> and then once we turned pro, it was the same thing. He just he would always chase me. Right. His day he says I, I wanted to beat Mike Christian. <laughs> right. Yeah, you guys were always you know, we real all close. Yeah. like that. I wanted to beat. I wanted to beat for sure. Um, Gaspari and LeBron. You know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody thought you can't beat if you're on. So. Right. But uh, I was the one for Barry. <laughs> but that was a great universe because it was covered on ESPN, and they did really a lot of coverage. Uh, Chris mm-hmm. Dickerson was the uh, commentator. Commentator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he really got some great coverage off of that. You look fantastic at that show. So Chris talked about his favorite in the heavyweight division. We've seen Barry DeMay, and now it's time to talk to another guy who's right up there, Mike Christian. Let's listen in. And I suppose if the bookies favored anybody here in Vegas, it'd be Mike Christian. All right. You agree with him? <laughs> Yes, of course. <laughs> you sound very positive, Mike. And your confidence must come out of knowledge of your physique, how you respond to your training, your own methods of nutrition. Want to tell us about that a little bit? Sure. Well, I've been training the last 10 years for, uh, in bodybuilding. And the last uh, 10 weeks for this particular contest, training, intense training. That's six days a week, uh, hour and a half in the morning, an hour and a half in the evening. Dieting, uh, very uh, low uh, calories, low fats, and uh, medium uh, carbohydrates. And uh, as far as my training, I train very hard and very intense. And I more or less play with it. You know, if I don't feel like training real hard, if my body says, no, I can't push 500-pound bench press today, I won't do it, you know. I've seen you train. You train like a demon. <laughs> and the weights you handle, incredible. Uh, a typical week for you in your training. Uh, you've sort of described it, but how do you divide your body parts? 
Okay, what I do is, for instance, Monday I'll come in, I'll do the push-pull program. Monday I'll come in, I'll do chest, shoulders, tricep, all pressing movements. The next day, Tuesday, I'll come in, I'll do back, biceps, all pulling movements. And the third day I come in, I'll just do legs because legs are your, a big part of your body and you need at least a day to do them correctly and properly. That's tr it takes a lot of energy, legs. Yes. That's half your body. Yeah, after I do them, I can't walk, especially the way I train. <laughs> and how about nutrition? Now, everybody's got you know, carbohydrates, some high, yeah. some low, high protein. What are your ideas on that? Um, what works for you? Yeah, what I do is I go on pretty much about 150 to 200 grams of protein for my body weight. I think that's uh, what works for me. Carbohydrates, I go fairly medium to high. You need the carbohydrates to uh, train for the energy. And I just watch my fats. The last six, five, six weeks for a show, I cut out milk, and bread, and more or less all the starchy and uh, dairy products. Okay, now the big question, the honest question. What is your weakness, my Christian? I have no weaknesses. None. Zero. <laughs> Now that's called high self-esteem. I guess you got to have that. You really oh, must yeah. believe. Listen, Mike Christian came from a tough background. He has made it. It's not been easy. He's overcome a great deal. And here he is in all of his muscular endowment. Incredible physique. And look at him play to the crowd. He was the only one, I mean the only one, Chris, at the weigh-in that played to the crowd. He understands the charisma part of it. He loves it. He's a ham. <laughs> He's a ham. Mike Christian with a great upper body. The calves are going to be slim. We've talked about that genetically. It's going to be a problem. How do you right. build up the calves? But you know, he's improved 100% since last year on his calves. Uh, genetically, it's a hard part for some people. Uh, high repetitions are very, very good. I believe in 25 to 30 repetitions per set. Not so much heavy, but just burn them. Get the blood in there. This is a great routine he's got going. Yep. Mike Christian, will he be Mr. Universe? He's going to have to beat up Barry Denae. It's awesome, that sort of power, size. Chris, what's Barry Denae thinking right here? He's probably not thinking anything and probably not even looking at him. He doesn't want to see him. <laughs> An excellent routine by Christian. That takes care of the individual stuff. Comparison poses. That's all coming up on ESPN Style. Well, it's time for the comparison poses, and we'll get to the pose down. These are the best six in the world. It's such an honor just to be among these men. When you think of all the heavyweights in the whole world. Chris, the one we did not show because of time, Mark Hintz from Canada is the sixth competitor. The two favorites, once again, DeMay and Christian. I'd like to see them side by side. All right, let's take a look at the side chest. Yep. DeMay is just huge. They're very different. They're both tall, of course, but different weaknesses, different strengths. DeMay is, in a sense, maybe more even, but he lacks Christian's thickness. Plus, look at the look at the lower back right the there. Lower back, the lower yeah. back. That tells I it. have to believe is going to hurt him. That is probably. You know, Chris, uh, the assignment on stage is at random. It has nothing to do with where they're standing. You see Christian first. Erickson. Oh, nothing to do with it at random. They're no, just it's, just, it's just how they were assigned. Because that question came up early in the day, sitting around uh, the lobby and talking about it. It's going to be very interesting to see what the judges do. LeMay, remember, was second last year. Christian was not even in it. This is Christian's first try at it. So he may have to wait till next year. We're going to see. Bob Paris from the United States was a winner a year ago. DeMay was second. Butler from Germany was third. Janich from Austria was fourth. They are not involved this year. You know, Chris, last year the Americans won three out of the five classes. Of course, we had the Bantamweight, 
uh, the competition in Singapore. And once again, no bad competition issue. But the United States has really dominated bodybuilding. We really have the best nutrition. We know more, best training equipment. Uh, there they go. Night and day. Now, this is a fight to the finish. <laughs> this is blood. 60-some <laughs> countries here. Going for the goal. Ten involved in the finals. Well, he doesn't he even says, I get off to the that. side. <laughs> ah, this is fun. No, yeah, it's Christian and LeMay side by side. Unlike the uh, special teams in football, they don't take their helmets off once in a while and throw a few punches. They'll, there they'll keep it clean, I guess. This is the pose down. This is most fun for me because they really get after it. Well, who do you like? Different positions. I'm not going to say. Who do you like oh, out there, very, folks? Very do you like DeMay? Do you like Christian? Do you like Erickson? Noose. I'm glad I'm sitting here just popping off instead of making a decision. Doing the same poses there. Pose for pose. Both showing the backs. I'm not sure if I'm DeMay I do that next to Christian. Because that, not on the back, no. Not the, the back. The poses, yes. Oh, if I were DeMay, I'd great. display my legs. Look, great legs. Yes. Look at the upper body. But look at the back compared to Christian right there. That's it. He's showing his weakness. Well, the judges had a last look to make their selection. And who's it going to be? It's going to be tough. They don't want to leave the stage, do they? No. Well, I'll tell you, Demay and Christian. Sportsmanship yes. again. Right there. This is the fourth and final class. This is the heavyweight class. There's the second place finisher last year, Demay. Wow, that's right exciting. Right next to Anus. This is they don't want to leave the stage. This is when you don't want to hear your name. You want to hear your name, but not yet. <laughs> All right, but we're going to hear somebody's name. We're going to hear about the winners. So are you. Stick around. All of the action from Caesars Palace right after this. One of them must be six. And here is the sixth place goes to Canada, Mark Pence. So Mark Pence uh, picks up the sixth spot. I was kind of impressed with him. I think a little outclassed on this particular day, but there are other days. Yes, Herb, in this group. Being sixth, he's happy being sixth. Mark Hintz. All right, let's find out who's number five. In fifth place, receiving the Silver Jubilee Trophy from Austria, Alfred Neugebauer. Lugabar Bar is seventh a year ago, so he moves up. Let's find out who the fourth place winner is. In fourth place, from Sweden, Krista Eriksson. You know, next year, Eriksson will be on his home boards because the contest will be in Sweden. He's got to like that. He's looking forward to that, I'm sure. You're going to see a lot of progress in this next 12 months. Did you see Christian get in the middle there? Oh, the yes. I told you he was a hand, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out the third guy. <laughs> Christian. <laughs> That's great. In third place, receiving the trophy as well as the bronze medal of these championships from Finland, Olaf Fanos. Wow. You'll hear more from this guy. Uh, once again, perfected. All right, who's it going to be? This is it, folks. Oh, here we go. And here are the last two. They hug already before I announce who is second and first. That's great sportsmanship. In second place, winning the silver medal from Holland, Barry DeMay. Boy, almost an apologetic uh, announcement from wow. Albert Buzak. And look at DeMay's face and look at Christian. It's a shame that somebody has to lose because it they is. were so it's close, true. Chris. It's absolutely true. It's very close. And they're both such great champions. It's too bad, as you say, one has to win and one has to settle for second. Mike Christian, the winner. Let's great go back winner. and get it from Albert Buzak. And here, 
is our world champ in the heavyweight category, Mike Christian, USA. Boy, that's what it's all about. Betty and Joe Weeder raise the hand of the champion, Mike Christian. If a smile on a face tells it all, that tells it all. Mr. Universe. Mr. Universe. Chris, I got to ask you, Mike Christian Mike versus Christian. previous champions, does he stack up? He more than stacks up, Irv. He's among the best ever. Five years ago, you didn't see that kind of size and muscular of that combination. It's unheard of. All right, what's ahead for Barry DeMay? He has finished second two years in a row. I predict Barry DeMay will come back even better and win the darn thing. He's got to. I'll tell you one thing, these guys cannot uh, just walk in and get a suit off the rack and I include you two. Where do you guys get your clothes? Well, you know, Verb, that's why we stay in sweat clothes. <laughs> we have the world's worst wardrobe. <laughs> I don't believe that for a moment. That's what it's all about. Mr. Universe and our champion in the heavyweight classification is Mike Christian. It was tough. It was close. I would hate very, to be a very judge. Tough. It's very demay. It's too bad that one man has to be second. They're both so impressive. Mike Christian, so happy. All of that hard work. You live on 300 calories. You sacrifice. It's all paid off here in Las Vegas, Nevada. For Mike Christian. He is Mr. Universe. 1984, the winner. And he's still posing. <laughs> yep. Can't stop. Told you he was a hand, didn't I? There he goes. All right. Christian, the winner. He uh, wins out over DeMay. Stick with us. We'll come back to Las Vegas, Nevada, right after this. Well, the competition is over, but the night isn't over, and Mike Christian has a chance to talk with Chris. My Christian, Mr. Universe, how does it feel? <laughs> Fantastic. You were confident from the very beginning. You that's, must have known something. That's true. I trained very hard all year for this, well, all my life, really. Yeah. Artie Zeller, he was the one that was actually doing the photos, and uh, he took a, what he called a magic shot of me doing uh, chin-ups in the warm-up room before that. on stage. I remember and that. It was Unbelievable shot, man. It was Mike, unbelievable shot. Magic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shot shots of Arnold. And it were like, some of them were like magic. To his day, right. it's still like. And I had a magic picture with my boy Artie, so it was fun. Yeah, really I fun. didn't know Artie Zeller took that picture. Yeah. You remember seeing the picture, John? I remember that picture, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was an amazing picture. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, hey, your That's back looked crazy in that picture, in that, uh, in that show. They grew back looked crazy. Mm -hmm. It was such a great photo because you would see in the background people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I was just doing my thing, warming up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Why? So then you went but, to the... Uh, um, after, after that, in 84, a lot of people were saying um, that I was the only one that beat Lee Haney, mm -hmm. the one in Olympia, you know, it was a big uh, a thing on me and him doing yeah. well in Olympia. And I think my first Olympia, I took third, so which was real good in Brussels. And um, I saw, I, I thought I could beat him one day. I, I couldn't beat him that day, but I thought if I kept on training, kept on putting the seven, eight pounds of muscle on, I said eventually, I think I thought I could beat him. Yeah. And of course, that 1990 Miss Olympia was a heartbreaker for me. I, yeah. <laughs> I kind of felt, a lot of people felt I could have won that show, you know, because it was a drug testing show. Yeah. And those guys set some rolls on their backs, <laughs> including the two leaves. <laughs> But, um, hey, Mike, let me take you back to that uh, 84 Olympia because you went and you just watched it, right? The one that was in New York in Madison Square Garden. Yeah. And that was mm -hmm. Lee's first win. And you got to see Sergio because Sergio came back. Yes. What did you think of that show? Because I, I remember seeing you on um, when it was on, uh, I think it was on CBS or NBC. And I remember seeing you right in the front there clapping. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable to see all those great champs on stage, people that I uh, looked up to for years that were in the magazines and on yeah. TV shows. And to see him in person, especially Sergio, he was like my idol for years, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I think that was your, no, is that the year he brought his little baby, little yeah, Sergio? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Give it the applause and cooperate with whoever's the winner, because that's what we came here tonight. Give it the support to the best man. The place that I took tonight, and that's a matter of eight, nine, one, 17, 20, no matter what, I will be forever the myth. So, 
that was that was it was fun. Yeah. Very. Yeah. Sergio Junior is a pro now. Yeah. Yeah. Very good too. Yeah. We we text each other all the time. Yes. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. What did you think of Lee's physique when he won? Lee Haney. Yeah. Um, very complete, uh, muscular, um, great poser. He had everything it takes to be Mr. Olympia yeah, yeah. eight times. Mm -hmm. He won every single one of them. Yeah. So when all from he's been John about said, Lee, why don't you just let me hold one of those Mr. Olympia trophies? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, take it home for a year. <laughs> we always, uh, I always tease him about that. <laughs> So we just one. He got eight in his uh, on his mantle boy yeah, in his uh, yeah. living room. Eight up. I'm like, wow. <laughs> just one, Mike. <laughs> so when you yeah. saw him win that show, you just won the universe the week before, and you saw him win that Olympia. Did you think that you could beat him the next year? Um, I didn't think I could beat him. I thought I could beat him eventually. I didn't know if I could beat him the next year because, mm -hmm. like I said, I did not want to compete or would not compete unless I was easy. Seven to ten pounds heavier on muscle. So if I could not put that seven to, or or more pounds of muscle on, I wasn't going to uh, win for sure, and I wasn't going to beat him. So okay. uh, that was the driving force. wasn't just going in just to just the place. He's a great champion. He's a great bodybuilder, and I knew it would take a lot to uh, dethrone the great Lee Haney. No yeah. question about it. So let's go to '85 then, Mike. That was your uh, premier year as a pro. You just turned pro. And you go mm -hmm. into the um, the night of the champions in New York, and mm -hmm. uh, you got fourth place there. Um, Albert Beckles wins, and uh, yeah. Rich Gaspari gets second. I can't remember who was oh, third. Bob, Bob okay. Birdsong. Bob Birdsong was third. So. Oh wow, Bob! Yeah, yeah. I took fourth or fifth, right? Fourth. fourth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So was yeah, that a shock? Because uh, you know, you, after winning the universe, did you think you were going to win that show pretty easy going to the night yeah, of champions? Yeah. To be honest with you, John, I did. Yeah. I really did. Especially with Pam up with the Olympia, Mr. Olympia already, you know. Right, so right. That was a show that I really want to win and, you know, felt I could win, could yeah. have won, you know. So that was a tough one. But that was a reality check for me, you know. I was like, okay, you need to do harder work. You got to get bigger. Yeah. I got to bring legs up. You know, there's things that I knew I had to do in order to be a, a Mr. Olympia or a Night of Champions contender. Right. What did you think of Gaspari? Because he had a, he had a shock everybody, right? He went from uh, in the one eighties, I think, when he won the universe, and then he's like over he's like two fifteen when he went to the night of the champions. A lot of people thought he should have won that night. Yeah, yeah, I thought he should have won too. He was in great shape, excellent condition. Uh, he's a hard trainer. He's a great guy, very tenacious, you know, and uh, very focused when it comes to training. Yeah. What was your What was your relationship like with Rich back then, Mike? Because I remember reading an article. I think it was in Flex. And you were saying, yeah, he's kind of a cocky kid from New Jersey, and you know, because he was a young guy coming up, and uh, all of a sudden he was like really good right at the top, right in the, you know, right when he turned pro. Right. Yeah. Well, of course, like I said, like I said, he was very cocky, <laughs> but um, um, I knew he was a force to be reckoned with, with just on his muscularity and being as hard as he was. You know, you you can't uh, look past him. Yeah. So uh, after seeing him in that show, I knew he was going to be my main competition along with Lee Haney in every Mr. Olympia or every uh, Arnold Classic. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, after a while, that's the only two contests I went in. I do Grand Prix here and there, but it was basically the, the uh, Mr. Olympia and the Arnold Classic every year. Yeah. Because I won it in 88 before they actually had the name Arnold Classic. Right. It was Mr. World. Then. I remember. I remember, yeah. yeah. And uh, Gaspar won it before that. So. Right. So when you and Gaspari were in 85 at that night of the champions, I mean, did you guys get along or did you like, uh, were you, was there sort of a, sort of some pressure there with you guys? Yeah, we didn't talk much at all. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because um, Gaspari's dad was crazy about me, man. He was oh, always really? Gaspari, look out for that Mike Christian. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I loved his dad, man. His dad was real, really good friends. Me and Rich were that good of friends, of course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his dad, um... We were really nice, good people. Follow. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So then you go into the Olympia that year, your first one, and uh, Lee wins his second one. It looks like Albert got second, Gaspari got right. third, McAvoy mm -hmm. got fourth, and then you were fifth in your first Olympia. How'd you feel about that taking fifth? Um, of course, I thought I wanted to win. You know, yeah. But far as competition, I, I, I for sure I shouldn't have won. For sure, I placed pretty close to where I should have placed, but um. 
it was again uh, opened up an eye for me to uh, see that I had to get better, bigger. You know, uh, work on certain body parts, of course. Yeah. And uh, I knew I had to come in uh, um, better the next year. I tell you, size, shape, cuts, complete balance. We just saw it, Lee Henney. Here's a guy we saw last year, the winner of the Mr. Universe contest, Mike Christian. You talk about charisma. This guy will play to the audience. He's known as Mr. Charisma. You can see why. Already he's doing something a little bit different. Starting off from the side. Mike has a very interesting physique. The muscularity is incredible. He's tall, very tall. He gives the appearance of being even taller than he is. If there's a flaw, it'd have to be his calves. They're much better than they have been, though. Mike's working hard on them. Interesting pose here, showing the back muscles. In a lunge position, coming up, front lat spread. His best last year, I felt by far, was a crab, and there's a good look at it. Chris, a question for you. Sure. Because calves are tough to build. What would you suggest? Well, high repetitions, you know, with not a lot of weight, 25 to 30 repetitions. And Mike and I have talked about his calves. He's, he works them really hard until they burn. Uh, it's an inheritance thing sometimes. It can be overcome. It's been done before, but it's just built behind the rest of them. Right, this is his first Olympia. Uh, how tough is it to, you, to look at him? He doesn't seem a, a bit nervous, but what's going on inside? No, he's got to say, hey, this is my first time at the big, big, big prize, the Mr. Olympia's top. Uh, I'm sure he's thinking it's just an honor being up here with these guys. He wants to place as high as he can. Not saying he's going in for the experience. He wants to win. He's probably realistic and saying, I want to be in the top five for the first time. Christian in the hunt for fifty thousand dollars. The great upper body, tremendous thighs. The calves would be the thing I would Very good routine. Uh, nothing unexpected. I like the opening very much. All right. Let's listen in as Rick talks to him. Mike Christian, you finally arrived Olympia time. How do you feel about your first Olympia? Well, I feel good about it. I did the best I could do. Had a little cramps, a little early in prejudging, and also now, but I did the best I could do. How did the audience receive you? Good, great. I got a great response. So. And how do you feel you're going to make out? I should make the top five, I hope. <laughs> Good luck, Mike. Thank you very much, Rick. I hope your cramps improve. Thank you very much. Well, you heard Mike say that he had some cramps. Hopes to be in the top five. We'll be back with more action from Bell. Yeah, it seemed like that year you had all the new guys coming in. Because in 84, you had a lot of the old guards still, you know, like... Um, yeah, back with Macaulay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like even Boyer Coe was in it and, you know, Tony Pearson and... Uh, uh, some of the older guys, like Chris Dickerson was in it that year in 84. <laughs> but then in 85, it was like all the new guys were coming in. You had uh, you and Barry DeMay and, and Rich and, of course, Lee right. Haney. And uh, McAway, I think that was McAway's last year also, right? Yes, it was the last year, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you felt like the new guys were, were going to be the new guard. You you guys were the, the, new, the new group in bodybuilding, right? Yeah, no question about it. I think everybody knew that, that we were coming. Yeah. We were going to be the new era of bodybuilding. Right. Prize money. We've mentioned the fifty thousand dollars for first. Second is twenty. Third is ten. Fourth place receives six thousand dollars, and then fifth and sixth receive four and three respectively. All right, our top six. We're going to be looking at Rich Gaspari, Mike Christian, Barry DeMay, Muhammad McCauley, Albert Beckles, Lee Haney is our defending champ. There's Mike Christian winking at the judges and the audience and so, but it is Gaspari. Macaui. Compulsories. Why don't you explain that, Chris? Uh, this is the comparative end of the bodybuilding, the finals, where you do the same poses so the judges can see who they like in the same position or in the same pose. Here they're looking at everybody's back together. 
this is where the contest really is crucial because it's comparative. You have to stand next to your competitor to see how this man looks compared to that one. And they try to psych each other out? Oh, that's a part of it. I never look another competitor in the eye. One general rule to follow. Unlike boxing. Okay. Unlike boxing, absolutely. All right, uh, look at the front pose here. Ah, it's uh, the mass, the muscularity, the right combinations of all of it. This is what counts. Macaulay has a disadvantage with his height, but I've had that same disadvantage. But the best man usually wins here regardless. Uh, Haney is just so awesome. He's just so overpowering. Uh, it is definitely an advantage being in the middle where Haney is, by the way. I hate to be on the end. It's happened, but you just hate that. Judges, in trying to be fair, will switch the competitors from time to time in their position. Albert Beckel on the end. We have three from the United States. DeMay, of course, from Holland. Macaulay from Canada. And Beckles from England. So the United States continues to dominate this combination, this competition, I should say. This is this is the pose last year I felt when we did the universe contest, Chris. Cost yes. May. He was yes. next to uh, Christian. I thought it cost him. Interesting, did side by side here again. DeMay's back is noticeably improved. Uh, in fact, he's showing it off uh, quite a lot. His lower back, especially, has been. He's really worked hard at it. Worked, yeah. Now here, the side tricep pose for the comparisons, and now they give the competitors options to do what they want, what they feel are their best poses to show them off the best advantage here. The audience loves this, by the way. They could just have to pose and pose and pose. Well, no secrets now. When you're side by side. The judges really, I don't know if, uh, if the Hayes in the barn to use an old cliche, if they've made their choices, but you can really see here. Sometimes, or they have, it's a matter of pleasing the audience, and they're tabulating the scores and things are going on, and uh, uh, it's awfully hard to see all the men at the same time. You get an overall view of them, but sometimes the results are, for all practical purposes, in. Chris, all of your expenses, you're paying yourself to get to, to Belgium? Uh, as a professional, no. Uh, we're thankful for that. Uh, flight, hotel accommodation, food, that's all part. That's the promoter's bill. He gets the bill for that. We just bring our muscles. Well, the crowd is going wild for Barry DeMay right yes, next to Yes, they'd like Christian. to see him do well here, and I think he will. Look at the trapezius on the competitors. Albert, Albert Beckles, you like him? Uh, I do like Albert Beckles very much. He's harder. Uh, he's more muscular than I've ever seen him. I, 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 it'd be hard to say he's definitely in the top three. I'll go on a limb and say he's in the top three for sure. Well, they're not shouting defense, folks. Those of you who follow football and basketball, they're shouting very, very, and there is very smart. There he is. <laughs> Loving every minute of it. The star is showing off his muscles there. This is the optional pose, and it is a long one. You pose that long, do you get tired? Those muscles get a little tense? Quick? I never have. I practice and practice and practice, so you can do it for two hours, practically. Also, the adrenaline's going awful fast by now. And you want, it, you want the trophy so badly. You don't really feel your body at this point. Well, there's a lot of money on the line. As we mentioned, it's $100,000, and the top prize, $50,000. As those famous calves, thighs. All right, who's it going to be? DeMay, Christian, McCauley, all of them. We'll be back with the awards right after this message. Stick with us. This title means the epitome of a sport. We're ready. Sixth place. Let's listen to Julian Blumart.
Well, he gets six. Crowd. Crowd didn't like that. <laughs> Might have a riot here. <laughs> Barry DeMay finishes six. Ben Weeder. Well, you know, for your first Miss Olympia competition, being six is such an honor. Uh, I was six back in 1979, 79, the first time I entered this competition in Columbus, Ohio. And I thought, well, sixth place, but you're in the money. They've seen you. You're a top competitor being sixth in Mr. Olympia. Well, once again, we've got nine judges here in the United States. And only two, because that, that seems to be the big bone of contention. All right, we're ready for number five. Look at the disappointment on yeah, Mike Christian's very face. Disappointed. Mike wanted to break the top three, I'm sure, but it's Mr. Olympia, first time entering it. Here again, that's, that's not bad. All right, that's Joe Weeder. That was worth $4,000. DeMay earned $3,000. Weeder on the right. Ben Weeder on the left. He's sandwiched between the Weeder brothers, you might say. Mike Christian, Barry DeMay, boy, they're... They're used to each other, and now Mike is, is his old self. For oh, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll take it well. Uh, you think about what you've done. All right, fourth place. So then in 86, uh, you did the Los Angeles Pro Championships and the World Pro Championships, and you got uh, second, right, to Gaspari. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, was a heartbreaker, too. <laughs> I was a close one. Could have went either way that year. Yeah, it was. I remember seeing the pictures of that, and I saw it on ESPN. That was a great show. Really great show. Man. We went at each other, boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's when the rival really started with him and I, you know? Right, right. And it was tit for tat. <laughs> Consensus of opinion, this is the man that Bridge is going to have to be. He is the pride and joy of Gold Gym, a 245-pound physical explosion. Chris Dickerson, Mike Christian requires no introduction of any kind. That's for sure. Watch Mike here. Incredible everywhere. Takes his time. During conventional poses, nothing exceptional. He just looks so exceptional. Mike Christian, Mr. America in 1984, Mr. Universe the same year, 6'1", 245 pounds, linebacker's dimension. Now Mike's doing poses with a good variety, kneeling poses, lunges, front, back, side, mixing it up very well. The judges like this. Chris, was there a slight hitch in that one particular rhythmic movement? Yes, but he covered up very well. In fact, I wasn't going to say anything, but you're right to observe it. He goes showing the back. Mike could be just a little bit sharper. I've seen him sharper, but I've never seen him this thick, so sometimes you don't know which is better. He's got added thickness to his physique. He knows right now that Gaspari is already going on stage. He knows that Gaspari has already won the judges to a certain degree. Psychologically, where is Mike right now? Does he have to push the extra yard to make it happen? Oh, yes. He knows that, too. He knows he's up against it. Rich Gaspar is this young, fresh kid from next door, not afraid of anybody, and Mike Christian knows that. He's known for this most muscular pose. Nobody should do it after Mike. Incredible. Not finished yet. Give him more. The judges and the audience are loving it. Thank you, Mike Christian. The theme, better than one. Let's meet Mike Christian. Mike, you have won the Mr. America competition. You have won the amateur Mr. Universe competition. How do you think you're going to do today? First or second for sure. I feel very confident. I'm in very good shape. I'm the biggest competitor, but not only you have to be big, you have to be very symmetrical and cut, which I think I'm right up there. So first or second for sure, Arnold. What do you think how much uh, it helps you to be that big? You're the biggest bodybuilder today in this competition. That's true. Um, it helps you a lot, because the bigger you are, the taller, and the more muscle you have with symmetry, 
this works out to be the best bodybuilder, you know. The bigger with, with symmetry and muscularity. So the bigger you are, the better it is. Yeah, well, thank you very much and good luck, okay? Thank you. Party Six Championship, Dave Hawk, Frank Richards, John Turilli, Rich Gaspari, Mike Christian, and Bob Paris. Now, of course, it is gut check time. Finalist number two, Frank Richards. Dave Hawk's, David Hawk is in this. This is Dave's first professional competition. Not bad, not bad at all. Now, here's Frank Richards, who's just so hard. He's probably the hardest man in this event. I'm, I'm sure he, I'm not surprised he's up there in the top six at all. Representing England, John Torelli. Here comes Rich Gaspari. Finalist number five, Mike Christian. Here comes, here comes Mike Christian. Ironically, standing next to his. Chief is comp his chief competition, Rich Gaspari. Bob Paris did make it. I'm sort of happy and surprised that he did. Here again, on this, uh, based on symmetry and proportion, natural gifts that he has, not the fact that he's that much in shape. Chris, now we are going to move okay, gentlemen. to a very difficult Order phase. Turn to the, right. the compulsory pose. There's is it conceivable now that one of these competitors could win during this? Oh yes, oh yes. As we say, the fat lady ain't sorry yet. Turn to the right. This thing's not over till it's over. Now they're just checking everybody's back here for comparison. Quarter turn to the right. Uh, this is what the judges have seen earlier, and the audiences are now gets the benefit of the same thing. We see these men front, side, back, side, front. Straight front, on. Double bicep. Are there subtleties here? Chris, that we can recognize? Are there certain aspects that perhaps experience might aid in survival? Oh, laboring it always in does. Compulsory? The first, we've just seen the front double arm, the first of the seven compulsories for the men. The women have five. Side chest. Second, front last spread. Here we go into the third, side chest pose. A lot of this depends on sometimes who you're standing next to. Turn you to the rear. Position. It always helps to be towards the middle also. Double bicep. Looking for the back development. Lower back, upper back, peak on the bicep, making sure you flex your calf and your thigh bicep. Last spread. Nothing can be soft here. Flex the whole body, very important. Back last spread for impressiveness. My Side Christian sure looks tricep. impressive, speaking of impressiveness. Side tricep coming up. Even though you're showing the front. tricep, you're flexing the whole body. Overhead again. abdominals. Abs, front thigh cuts, hard. Most muscular pose we call. Relax. Relax. I'd say the abdominal area ready. is the hardest and the last area to come in when you're really training for these events. That means you're in shape. Mr. Dickerson? It is showtime here in Columbus, Ohio. It Put is indeed. Course, now here we go. This is the real competition, the real meat of this event. You're out for blood. The battle between Christian and Kaspari for number one. Cabs on each other here. Tip for tat, as we say. Chris, the moment this fiery moves down stage. Christian moves down stage. Look at that into the challenge. Four. Fight to the center. John Torelli looking very good here. But the battle for number one is between Christian and this fiery, clearly.
I'd hate to call this myself. They're both so good. They're just very different. One is short, stocky. One's tall and more lanky. All trying to outstage the other one. It's very hard to call. The car is going off those sides. Going a strong point. These men representing our in training, discipline, diet, courage. Who will pick up the $25,000 winner's check? We're going to find out momentarily. Stay with us as the 1986 World Bodybuilding Championships continue from Columbus, Ohio. We're back after this time. Do you want to make more money? Check. We await the judges' decision. Place World Championship 86, Bob Parrott. Bob Harris. That's the way I would have picked it. He's a good sixth place. Takes it well. Well, he's got his favorite, fresh among the gals. Fifth place. Fifth place trophy. And $2,000 goes to contestant number nine, John Pirelli. John Pirelli, fifth place. Now that's lower than I would have placed John personally. He could have been sharp, it's true. Fourth place. Fourth place, World Championship, 1986. Trophy and $5,000 to Dave Hawk. Fourth place, Dave Hawk. Fourth place, not bad for the first professional contest. In third position. Third position. Still posing. Trophy and seven thousand dollars in cash goes to Frank Richards. Frank Richards of Frank England. Frank Richards from England. As predicted, Gasparri versus Christian for all the models. Who do you like, Chet? Go ahead. At least I've two. got to take the young man in my way. Runner-up uh -huh. spot. Second place. Runner-up position. Trophy and $10,000 goes to Mike Christian. Well, as you say, Chet, the world's a body body wins it. The first what's not ever looked at performance of Mike Christian, a great, Rich great champion. He certainly gave a great account of himself here in Columbus, Ohio this week. Oh, that he did. You know, I couldn't really call it myself, even at the very, very end. But Rich is so hard and so tight and muscular. Rich Gasparri. Look at the abs. The man's in shape. He will tell you, the man he admires most is Arnold Schwarzenegger. He trains five hours a day, six days per week. He's won numerous titles from Edison, New Jersey. Rich Kasparri, your champion. Mike Christian is your runner-up. In this, your 1986 Men's Professional World Bodybuilding Championship to the Veterans Coliseum in Columbus, Ohio. Stay with us. Yeah, because you, you look much better. The, if I'm not, not mistaken, John, the last Mr. Olympia, I mean, the last Mr. Olympia that I competed in in 1990 in Chicago. Yeah. Drug tested show. Wasn't he in that show? Yeah. Yeah. He got fifth and you got third. Yeah, right. I beat him. I was first. Yeah. yeah. First, I'm beating him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was something I wanted to do all through my career. Right. <laughs> so at the end, I, I you know, I, I, I beat him. And, but that was, a, that was a tough show. I had to basically, uh, Look in the mirror and say, Mike Christian, you will never be Mr. Olympia. If I didn't win it that year, I was not never going to win it. Right, right. I, that, of course, is when Vince McMahon and Doug B.F. came in. Uh, yeah, yeah. The big contracts are there. Actually, what happened, before I actually uh, signed the contract with Vince McMahon, I went to Joe Weider, and I told him, you know, he's offered me this, and he wants me this. I said, Joe, I said, I need to make something. I have a family. I want to buy a house. I'm gonna, you know, you can't say um, my mortgage, I'll be in top five in Mr. Olympia. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I'll make X amount of dollars. So I wanted Joe to uh, to do something. Joe looked at me and says, he says, Mike, we're good friends then. He says, Mike, I won't compete. Is what he said. Hmm. Um, 
When did you but first? I, I think I was the only one that actually went to him first and before yeah. they joined. Gary knows they just joined before, but I wanted to give him a shot. At I told him I didn't want three hundred thousand dollars a year, but just something I can you know live off uh, off you know. Right. When when did you first meet Joe Weider? Um, I met him uh, after the um, eighty four uh, uh, nationals in uh, universe. Okay. He called me down. Mm-hmm. Did a photo shoot with. Uh, Rachel McLeish never yeah. came out, but yeah, that's where I met Joe for the first time. What did you think of Joe when you met him? Oh, like he's a great person. He's, yeah. you know, he's so much into bodybuilding. Yeah, that's <laughs> you know? what I heard. Yeah, and, uh, he, he was very encouraging. Uh, uh, you know, when he told me that what he told me about uh, Lee Haney, I'm the only one that can beat him. This and that. I say he probably tells every guy. <laughs> and he did. Yeah, Tom Platt told me the same story. <laughs> Robbie Yolo. <laughs> right. <laughs> Says to everybody. You can beat Lee. You can beat Lee. Yeah. And Lee Haney, you're the greatest. Nobody can beat you. <laughs> <laughs> you play, play both sides of it. You know, John? Right, right. <laughs> That's my man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it had to be great being around in that, that era of bodybuilding, knowing Ben Weeder and Joe Weeder and all those guys, you know, being around that era. Yeah, they did so much for bodybuilding, John. They were, yeah. You know. So um, go back to the 86 Pro World, that one that was in Columbus when you and Rich went down to the wire. It looked like you were much improved in 86 than you were in um, in 85. It looked like you were a lot bigger. Yeah, I was. I was bigger, harder. Um, I emphasized very much at that time on my posting routines, mm-hmm. which uh, – Back then, and it's supposed to be the same now, they're supposed to count the round, the posing yeah, round. Yeah. They didn't back then, they don't do it right now. Of course, we know that, you know? Yeah. I really wanted to make sure I left no door uh, open, so I had my body right, I had my you know attitude right, and of course, my choreograph routine with yeah. special music and all things. So, I did everything on that show. I really you know, wanted to do really well in there, which I did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember your posing routine. It was really good that year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Choreographed. <laughs> yeah, you, you're one of the few guys that can really nail that three quarter back pose. <laughs> <laughs> he Arnold and probably Ali, Ali, uh, Ali, Ali, Ali Mala. Mala. Yeah, yeah. Ali Mala. Yeah. yeah. He could do that shot too. Actually, um, Artie is the one that showed me how to do it. Really? You know, I was trying to do it. He said, no, you keep your waist this way and turn this. And oh, really? That, yeah, first yeah. time he helped me out do Arnold shot. And, huh. Yeah, there's only, like you said, there's only a few people in the world, even now, that can do that shot and look. Right, yeah. You know, you gotta keep your hips this way and turn your whole body. Right. Very difficult to do, you know, over 240, 50, 60 pounds, you know. Right, yeah. I, I try to help a lot of guys do that pose, and very few of them can do it. You very, know? exactly. Very, right. very. Right, your, your hips have to stay one way, and then your waist has to turn, you know. Turn. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So you go to the Olympia that year, and it's in Columbus again. And mm-hmm. now this time you move into the top three. Uh, Rich beat you again, but uh, you looked really, really good that year. And it was you, Lee Haney, and Rich Gaspari in the top three. Yep. So that had to feel good, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought I was going to be like that every contest afterwards. Yeah. Uh, it didn't turn out the way I thought it should have went. Right. But, you know, that was, um, it was a while before I won something in between there, I believe. Yeah. Yeah.
felt good about that show, right, in 86? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did you think you were going to beat Rich at that one? Yes. Yeah. Who is it going to be? Spread out and give yourselves some room. Spread out. Christian, Casper, and Beckles. Hansel. Front, double bicep. Haney. Or Demay. Relax. Front, lat spread. Some compulsory poses. Relax. Side chest. Relax. Turn to the rear. One leg back, showing the calf. Rear double bicep. Six best backs in the world. Relax. Rear lat spread. Rear lat spread. Relax. Quarter turn. Side tricep. Relax. Facing front. Abdominals and thighs. Relax. Relax. And if the music man's met ready, let's pose down. sanctum of muscle down. In third place, third place, $13,000. That belongs to Mike Christian. Second place, the second place check of $25,000 this year. Second place belongs to Richard Gaspari. Yeah. Where did you feel you had over? Lee Haney before the show, and 
we was working out in the gym together, you know, we were spotting each other, and he, I would say, come on, do two more reps, or, you know, go a little bit more harder, right. and he would go harder. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked at him and said, we cannot work out together, I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 Not tricked hard enough for me. Right, right. Oh, those are good old days, man. Wow, so much fun, John. Yeah. The hip 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 hop, you don't stop. Rock it out, baby, bubble to the boogie dee bang bang, the boogie to the boogie dee bee. Now what you hear is not a test, I'm rapping to the beat. And me, the duo, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. You see, I am Wonder Mike, and I'd like to say hello. Or to the black, to the white, the red, I train and the all year round. Very consistent, very hard training. Always changing my routine, uh, intensifying my routine. You know, I want to win. I want to be the best. I want to be compared to the best. Well, you heard my I brought you friends along. And next on the mic is my man Hank. Come on, Hank, sing that song. Check it out. When I'm pimp the dip, the ladies pimp. The women fight for my delight, but I'm the grand master with the three MCs that shop the house for the young ladies. And when you come inside and to the front, you do the freak spank and do the bump. And when the sucker MCs try to prove a point with Trent's trio, I win the serious joint from sun to sun and from day to day. I, I sit think about my workout prior to the workout, you know, the morning before, the night before, I almost dream about the workout. And I try to always outdo my prior workout, you know, for instance, if I do uh, four sets of 500 uh, squats, and next time I'll try to do five sets of uh, uh, 500. You know, I always try to beat the last workout. That's my goal, you know, beat the last workout, outdo the last workout, outdo the other competitor, you know. I'm just a very competitive person. I love it. Do it, I go do it, do it, do it. And I'm here, and I'm there. I'm Big Bang Hank, I'm everywhere. I just throw your hands up in the air and party harder like you just don't care. Let's do it. I don't stop, y'all. I take a talk, y'all. You don't stop. I go home, tell. I have been going for the past five years looking for a good training partner, which I've had a few here and there, you know, but they tend to burn out, you know. <laughs> I, I train very, very hard, you know, and they just don't last, you know. I've trained with Lee Haney and I've trained with almost everybody that you can uh, imagine. The difference between me and Lee Haney is uh, I am a lot more aggressive than him. He is a genetic freak. Whatever he does, he will grow, you know. We trained together uh, five or six times, you know, and it just didn't quite click. Uh, I wanted him to do extra four or five reps and he wouldn't do it, you know. And I'm that type, I'm that type of person. You know, I need that extra four or five reps. I need somebody to yell at me. I need somebody to push me. Ah! So, don't count. Get the Come on. Two. Three, stretch. Yeah. Four. Five. Help me, help me. Seven. Let's go. Eight. Nine. To find a good training partner clicks is very, very hot. And thank God I got one this time. Luis Frides, he's from Brazil. He's a becoming bodybuilder. He placed uh, eighth or ninth in the universe this year. And he's a big kid, very symmetrical, very good looking, uh, trains like an animal, just like me. And, uh, and we really, uh, we have this special magic together, you know. I mean, uh, he wants it just as bad as me. And we just really click together. I'm very happy with it. Stretch, stretch. Five more. One. And two. Three. Track the back, right here. Four. Come on! Five. A good training partner, I tell you, what it is, is you have to have somebody that you can listen to. You know, like when they say five more reps, you can do it. Just anybody can't tell me five more reps, you know. It takes a certain type of voice, a certain type of person for me to listen to. That's why I can't just train with anybody. Let's go. Okay. Five more, and one, and two. You know, I have to see something, and I have to see that he will do five more if I tell him, you know, and he is able to do it, you know. But that's one thing, the magic I feel between me and him. He wants it just as bad as me. We're both young, hungry lions. <laughs> yes. Come on. Come on, Mike. Yeah, keep squeezing. Come on. Five more, let's go. Ah! Yeah. The hip 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 hip
and me, the groove, and my friends are gonna try to move your feet. You see, I am Wonder Mike, and I like to say hello. Or to the black, to the white, the red, and the brown, the purple, and yellow. One more set. One more set here. 10, 12 reps. Inclusive bicep, tricep, bicep. shoulder, shoulders. Like two sets each. That's just preparation. I truly enjoy training. It's very aggressive at an atmosphere here, very competitive. And we got a lot of uh, big guys here, you know. I need that around me, strong big guys, you know. At World Gym is a bit different. It's a little more relaxed, you know, and it's a little smaller. I need a big gym with big guys around me. <laughs> I see a lot of the young bodybuilders today, especially in Gold's Gym, they try to lift heavy, heavy weights, you know. They see me, Charles Glass, the Barbarians, and they try to lift the same weight, and the form is nowhere near as good as ours, you know. They're just trying to get it up just to say they lifted 500 pound bench press, you know. So um, that's one thing I do on, when I train people. I do that for a living, and I, I, I really stress form. Because what you do is, if you use good form, the weights will increase. It just takes time. You start off with good form on 85 pound curl, and you go from 95 in six weeks or whatever. Same with a bench press, an incline uh, press, squats, everything. Good form, and your weight will go up. It just takes time. Because it isn't the weight. It's the form and the intensity that builds the muscle mass. When I'm on stage and when I'm posing against Rich Gaspar, Lee Haney, Albert Beckles, I'm very aggressive. I want to win, you know, I want to show the other competitors and the judges and the people in the audience that I am the best. Lee cannot get much bigger than he is now. Lee, Gaspari, Beckles, all of the top five, all of the top ten. I am the only competitor that can really put more muscle on his frame because my frame is taller and bigger than the other competitors and the tallest competitor. So what I have to do is I have to keep on putting more muscle on, which I do. Every year I put six to eight pounds of muscle on, you know, which is phenomenal. Not too many bodybuilders do do this. It's just a matter of time for me, and I think this year is the time. Watch out, Lee. Is it possible that you're underestimating some of the other people? I mean, after all, Rich Gaspari is very good. Albert, Albert Beckles, Beckles is very good. Yeah. Uh, do, don't you have to keep them in mind as well as Lee? Of course. Uh, I, you know, I don't... Lee Haney's the man to beat, no question about that. But of course, I see Albert Beckles and Rich Gaspari haven't beat them yet either, you know? So, uh, no, no, I'm just... All competitors are equal, you know? I just... I go for number one, you know? That's true. If you finish first, you beat everybody. That's right, exactly. Well, listen, good luck in the Olympia. Thank you, Bill. Okay. We'll take it. So we go to 87 now, Mike, and... Um, Ooh, that was a good year in Sweden, yes. Yeah, yeah, to Sweden, and you take uh, fourth, and uh, Labrada beat you, and Lebr that was Labrada's first year. How did you feel about that? That hurt. Yeah. That hurt. I didn't see it coming. I looked good that year. I wasn't perfect, but I looked really, really good. Right. Some of my uh, best photos that I have nowadays is from that year. Really? I was 87. Yeah. I was big. I was pretty hard. I wasn't ripped. I was pretty hard. And I... So when I get on stage, I'm like, hey, watch me flex, you know, let me show you what I've done all year. So I really enjoy myself.
And there's my Christian, as I mentioned, also a brand new father. The baby born was 9 pounds, 11 ounces, a big baby. And when Lee Haney heard that, he said, well, Mike finally beat me at something. I would say so. <laughs> this is Mike Christian's signature pose. Everybody imitates it. He has a lot of flair with his posing today. I've never seen him pose this well. Very inventive. Very deliberate. S slight slip there. You can tell he enjoys being on stage because he's a true showman. Absolutely. And everything he does, by the way. Showing off the back. Just on what I've seen so far, I'd certainly put Mike Christian in the top five to be conservative. He could possibly make the top three. He's really showing himself to tremendous advantage today. Mike Christian, 28 years of age, six foot one, 250 pounds, the same size, interestingly enough, as Lee Haney. Yes, Lee Haney has more weight in the leg department, and that's what could separate them today. Nice moves. Mike worked with a choreographer in Los Angeles, putting this together. And the crowd reacting positively to the routine of Mike Christian, now living in Los Angeles, formerly from Cleveland, Ohio. Chris is backstage with him now. Chris? You look tremendous up there. You showed your back off very well. Did anything happen, happen with your posing? Yeah, the stage was very slippery, you know, and I'm, I'm right up there, and I was like slipping around <laughs> the thing there, which was a little uncomfortable, but uh, I made it work. I thought the routine was choreographed very well, and I executed it uh, very good, but I was just a little uncomfortable. I was slipping ar around up there. <laughs> but, you know, we got another round to pose down, and that stage is a battlefield, and I'm a warrior, and I have, I'm at war tonight. So you got one more round, and we're going to do it. Watch me flex. Well, the battle lines have been drawn. The Warriors will take the stage for the all-important pose down. Sure. I didn't see LeVon at all in there, you know? Yeah. But he stunned the world, that show. You know? Yeah, yeah. With his symmetry and his condition. Right. And his pose, his attitude, everything was spot on. Yeah. He did everything perfect. Yeah. So did you feel that he was going to be one of the top guys coming up then, after that show? I didn't then. No, I thought no. it was just what the judges preferred at that contest of that year. Okay. So I didn't really think of, you know, it being other than a fluke, to be honest with you. Right, right. <laughs> I just figured, okay, <laughs> it happened here. The judges wanted to see this, so that was it. I didn't think it would ever, ever happen again. Yeah. So you, of course, you, you, still still top top three was, you still thought the top three was you and Lee and Rich at exactly. that point. Yeah. Come on. Front left spread. Side chest, any side. We go to to your back, do a back, double biceps. Come on. Back, let's spread. Stay in line. Come on. Triceps pose, any side. And front showing abdominals and thighs.
for the top six finalists is one minute post down. Come on. him in there yeah yeah i remember that was uh that was his first olympia and i was sort of shocked too that he made the top three i was like wow that's a statement yeah you know? yes yes yeah but he had a kind of macaulay type physique you know right right samir you know, yeah. perfect century yeah he did better than actually samir well he didn't actually win the olympia but he placed every year he won a lot of pro shows yeah mm -hmm. yes. sixth place comes from Netherlands, Barry DeMay. $4,000 and a medal. On fifth place, Winner of six thousand dollars comes Robbie Robinson. On Fourth place, winner of $9,000, comes from USA, Mike Christian. Winner of Nine thousand dollars. Mike Christian, fourth place. A big hand for Mike Christian. Please stay on stage, all six. Please stay on stage, all six. All right, thank you for joining us for another edition of the Bodybuilding Legend Show. Be sure to join us next time for part two of our interview with Mike Christian where he talks about competing in the Mr. Olympia against Lee Haney and also winning the Pro World Championships in 1988 and then competing in the first ever drug tested Mr. Olympia in 1990 as well as his years with the WBF and Vince McMahon. So that'll be next time on the Bodybuilding Legends Show, part two of our interview with Mike Christian. See you then.